Okay, so I'm here with Lisa um, from the Baked Dane, a, yeah, a Tijan baker in, in Levin, I believe. Yes. Uh, a bakery of Danish style breads and other, other goods. I haven't actually got to eat any yet, but I understand you guys oh, do, do post it, so I have to get onto that. Um, so it's hearing about you guys, and how do we look at your website? There's lots of delicious looking, delicious looking goods there to check out. You sell to small farmers markets and small style groceries, uh, grocers, I should say. Yeah, our main our main focus um, has always been the the farmers markets that we go to. Nice. It's, we've we've grown our business from there. That's when we've um, you know you find that direct connection with your customers, and they tell you what they don't like, they tell you what they like. So we've grown our business from there. They're the reason that we're here today. Yeah. Yeah, and that feedback is essential in, in, a, in a good business, in a good food business, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so just uh, my first question for you is: um, hopefully, we've now seen the worst of the lockdown. My fingers are crossed. Um, and I was just wondering, how's that affected you guys? Lockdown was um, a bit of a sort of complete upside down um, turnaround for us. We um, all my um, girls that bake in the bakery, so we're four girls. Yep. Um, we all have young kids. So yeah, okay. obviously things had to um, had to change. So me and my main baker, I'm so lucky that she's also my neighbour on our rural property in, in Levin. So us two families kind of um, got together and sat down and said, okay, well, let's come up with a plan. You know, are we going to keep operating? Can we keep operating? Are we allowed? And if so, what are we going to do? So we came up with a couple of ideas before we'd sort of seen the full list of, of restrictions and requirements and stuff. And, um, and decided that no matter what, we would be in a bubble of eight. So two families would just come together um, so that me and Asha could still um, fully operate the bakery if we need it. Um, and then only the husbands would obviously be allowed to, to go to do the groceries, which has been amazing, obviously. <laughs> <on that. laughs> you know, with, with the line click and collect, it's been really, really easy. And, and yeah, whenever, um, whenever we sort of drop the, the products to the... The shops that have been allowed to be open it's been you know really really strict as well and following yeah. all of the rules and regulations but a big turnaround because the you know everything had to happen at night where normally we're used to showing up at seven and leaving it at two to go and pick up the kids and stuff yeah so now we've completely had to sort of swap around with the kids being entertained during the day and then me and asha could pop over and get started at night after they were in bed so oh, that sounds yeah cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, and, and I imagine that change, because it was so sudden, would have been quite a stressful, stressful wee bit of time there as things started to yeah, come to Yeah, but, light. you know, I am a person that just sort of, you know, you, you go with the flow, and, and I'm very, um, not spiritual, but I believe that if it's meant to be, it'll be, and if you're, yeah. you know, doing the right thing, then, then it'll work for you. Fantastic. Have you had any troubles with supply or being able to keep up with demand through this well, lockdown? We really ran into... To, problems if you can call it that with obviously all of our online sales peaking like we, we skyrocketed yeah. it, it online we um you know used to sell six percent online and suddenly we're selling 57 i think it is percent is I coming from that. online so everything in that um aspect of, of making a package ready suddenly i had no more boxes um i'm very much about using what we've got in this business and being waste free and we try our best so a normal week for me, I'd be um, collecting boxes from around Levin. I've got a couple of people that I get the cardboard boxes from that we break down and sort of and make fit. And suddenly we just had no more boxes. We had no more tape. We had no more ink to print tickets. Um, I'm so lucky. I've got a really good friend that works at a um, supermarket as a merchant, so stocks off all of the shelves at night. So the girls in the supermarket have been, you know, Making okay. sure they put all the little boxes aside for us and our whole bakery is now you know packed with small boxes and and we've got a good demand coming in and we managed to get tape from the supermarket which was good and yep. now i've yeah, just received the ink again this morning so we've sort of just been pottering around sending emails to people and then having them drop the tickets in the mailbox and so can you just tell me a wee bit more about your waste free philosophy you guys have got at the bake day i'm just it actually comes down to just having the cheapest product mm -hmm. you know um i know that that what we've got can seem like an expensive product to some people so i try to um not only explain to them that it's not but i try to minimize any other cost that we mm -hmm. that we have so i i could be using um i could get printed fancy cardboard boxes to send our products in but i don't see the need for it because that cost would only need to go on to to our customers yeah 
And to be honest, they don't care if it shows up in, a, you know, in a recycled like. box. It's actually, yeah, you're yeah. getting thumbs up from, from most people now. Um, exactly. So, yeah, we're, we're just very much about using whatever we've got. Um, mm -hmm. One of our latest products, well, it's, it's been on the market now for six months, but that's the, um, the ride chips that we've got. Mm -hmm. So we have always had our Danish sourdough. Um, and some of the loaves wouldn't get sold at the markets. And although I transform a lot of it into breadcrumbs or porridge for the kids or whatever, we sort of thought, okay, well, as we're getting bigger, there's a lot more loaves coming back from the markets. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started thinking into to building a product that would, you know, could be used all throughout. So we froze them and now we thinly slice them and rebake them with garlic infused olive oil. And it's become a garlic rye chip, so it's a oh, it's cool. a yeah insane product that has you what know, a like, great repurpose yes. yeah yeah and they last you know when they're baked and and they've got another six months of of shelf life so it's a yeah that was oh, a win -win -win yeah. for us initiatives like that actually make a huge difference in the grand scheme yeah, yeah. um so for twenty twenty you know we had um a couple of the big food shows where we locked in that yeah. we were going to attend for the first time ever we've sort of we've grown the business now to where we we were ready to take the next step. Um, I was starting to look at bigger ovens and adding, you know, potentially oh, yeah. another baker. And we, we were ready for that step. My, um, my small kids have, have reached an age now where I felt like, I, you know, we could, we could do this. Yeah, we were ready. So, um, so it was, you know, complete turnaround. But it's, it sparked a lot of things where I'm now thinking of instead of, um, not so much relying on other people, but, you know, we were going to go to bigger outlets and approach um, bigger shops and um, mm. potential food chains and, and all of this. Where I'm now more thinking maybe we need to, you know, grow us and, yeah. and, um, and have, the, have the, the financial part coming back to us. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking 2020, instead of going to all of these amazing food shows that uh, have now been postponed or... Or cancelled yeah, anyway. We might um, look at doing up this old caravan that I bought ages ago and still haven't done anything with. And then, you know, not becoming a little food show, but but have a little have a little outlet from there so that you're able to, if stuff is to shut down again, or you know, we've got to think worst case scenario. Look at all of the other countries. You yeah. sort of it might not be the worst of it yet, but but I was thinking we yeah. Our focus and our plans would, would need to be with us and what we could do and, yeah. and have a couple yeah. of plans of attack. Um, I've also been really lucky to be able to experiment with sourdough pizza. That's oh, okay. Out. How's that gone? Pretty well in the bubble. So we have, um, that's another, it's another yeah. dream that's, you know, I grew up in a pizza place, so it's another dream that has sort of always lurked underneath. Um, yeah, cool. And yeah, we think we might we might be able to um, to try some, some setup for people to maybe collect their pizzas or... Yep. you know, do some, some takeaway pizzas out of the, out of the bakery as well. It's I think a, a lot of positive things will, will actually come from lockdown because suddenly you have, you know, started looking, okay, well, what, what can we replace something that we normally would get from the supermarket with yep. locally? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, that brings me up to my last question. Uh, a bit of a lockdown highlight for me has been learning about how to make sourdough. It's, I, I think everybody in New Zealand's doing the same at the moment. What, what have been your lockdown highlights? It's definitely in the sourdough range as well. Um, yeah. We, um, I do use some yeast sometimes. I have to be completely honest. I'm not 100% sourdough, but I definitely prefer sourdough. But I was trying to buy um, yeast. I think I was making some um, birthday buns for my boy. And I was trying to buy yeast from the supermarket and it just, you know, I couldn't find anything mm -hmm. and so I remembered that I had um, a year ago well I've obviously got stashes of my sourdough packed away like there's some in the freezer here the neighbors got some in the freezer yeah. um, and we've dried some because if anything ever was to go wrong then we could always restart it up okay. Okay. and so I um, had this crazy plan that why not you know make a sourdough kit and actually sell that to people um, so that cool. they could activate their own well it would be our sourdough but it would become yeah. theirs um, so I went over to the bakery and like sifted through all of my stuff and found this magic jar with the dried sourdough and ran some experiments and had some some friends run experiments as well. And, you know, they said you have to make videos. You know, yeah. you have to actually show people how to do it because it's um, it's doable, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, yeah. And especially not if you just read the instructions. Yeah. So okay. that's been yeah a huge highlight for us. It's um, cool. It really, really took off and, and it still is. Um, yeah. 
yeah, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a lockdown product that's come out and it's, um, yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, it's, it's funny. A lot, of people are, highlight. a lot of people are comparing the sourdough to the likes of the Anzac biscuits. You know, at the time of the war, Anzac biscuits became a real phenomenon of, and, and marked that time of, of trouble yeah. and difficulty. And sourdough seems to be this one, the one that will mark coronavirus. Yeah. So we might need people. to rename it to, you know, lockdown <laughs> yeah. sourdough. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Basic thanks, lockdown thanks. sourdough. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for that, Lisa. Really appreciate Sounds it. Sounds awesome. We'll look forward to staying in touch. Oh, thank so you. Nice.